Dave Parody of financialviz.com and thinkoutsidetheslide.com. You've done some financial analysis and you want to communicate the trend in some different data series. The challenge comes, what if those data series are not measured in the same units? Or they're measured in the same units, but they're vastly different, wildly different values, orders of magnitude different. How do you compare those trends? Well, one of the great ways to do it is to use an index line graph because the message is about the trends and not about the actual numbers. So typically here's what we'll start with. This is an example where we have five different data series and they're measured in very different units. So the first data series, number of employers, that's number of organizations. Second, number of members, that's individual people. Annual payroll, that's in dollars. Beneficiaries is former employees and annual benefits again is in dollars. So we've got three different units, vastly different. How do we actually look at the trends in each of these data series? What we can do is we can do use an index line graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this table and we're going to turn it into a table for our graph that looks like this. So the first thing we've done is we have set each of the initial values for the data series to 100. Now you could start with one as well. Uh, indexing is a concept from economics where we relate everything back to the initial value. So we set the first value to 100 and then what we do is we scale all the other values based on their ratio to that first value. So we now have eliminated the units from each of these data series got it all down to an index value, which now can be compared. So an example of the scaling. So if you just look at the first employer's data series, the first couple of data points. So the first data point was 585, and we set that to 100. The second, for 2009, that value was 601. So if the 2008 value is set to 100, then the 2009 index value, the calculation is, 601, which is the 209 value, divided by that first value, 585, multiply that by 100 because our baseline is 100, so we get the 102.735. So each time we are scaling the data value to against that first data value. Now we have all of our data that can be compared in terms of the growth rate. Again, this only works when the message is around the growth rate. You've done the analysis and you really need to communicate the growth rate. Now we can create the graph that shows the growth rate in each of these different data series. Very important to see that compared to each other. So this is a line graph, a regular line graph that we use in Excel. Just cleaned it up a bit, got rid of the title and the legend. The lines we have set the uh, horizontal axis setting to say start on the tick marks instead of between the tick marks. The reason that's really important in an index line graph is you need the line to start right at that 100 value on the vertical axis, not slightly away from it because then people don't know is it really starting there or not. So we set that on the horizontal axis to make sure it starts right against the vertical axis. When we're using an index line graph, I always like to leave the light grid lines on. Reason being is, is that we're trying to compare a trend and the audience needs to know what a horizontal line is so they can see is a trend up or down or how much up or down it is. So by leaving those light grid lines in makes it easier for the audience to understand the trends. To label each of the lines, because we got rid of the legend, I add data labels. I add the series name as a data label just to the last point, position it to the right, and now the label is easy to uh, match to the line because I've set the text color of that label to be the same as the line color. Make it easier for your audience to connect those two. And then finally, I've adjusted the minimum and maximum of the vertical axis. Now, typically, we will want to start axes at zero because then it gives a true picture. But in this case, we're not starting at zero. We're starting at 100. So what I've done is I've eliminated everything below 80 because it's really not relevant to the message here. Now that trends, those trends show more dramatically and it's clearer the difference between those trends. Now we can compare different data series that are measured on very different units against each other when we're looking at the growth rate. So when your message is to see the trends in data series that are measured in different units, use an index line graph. And by doing this, we allow that comparison 
to be made and our message comes through clearly. For more visuals that you can use to communicate the results of financial analysis, go to financialviz.com or thinkoutsidetheslide.com.